Hello, hello, board dimmers here and welcome to another tactical masterpiece by David Janowski, played in 1896 in Nuremberg in Germany. Uh, Janowski at that time was 28 years old, already very strong player, very strong tactician and um, his ranking according to the chess metrics 2668. Uh, it's not his peak yet because a couple of years later uh, he was one of the best uh, players in the world for the couple of months uh, in I think 1904 uh, he was number one in the world according to the chess metrics and the games he played against very strong uh, opponents very dangerous always very dangerous in this game he's gonna play as white and his opponent Emil Schalop Emil Schalop was a German master 53 years old at that time and, and his ranking according to the chess metrics 2470 and of course in this game he's gonna play as black so without further ado uh, let's see what happened uh, on the board we have d4 by Janowski d5 c4 d takes on c4 um, that means we have queen's gambit accepted and now knight f3 uh, and here the most popular answer is um, knight f6 uh, also a6 preparing b5 uh, which leads to quite sharp variation however uh, we have some another um, uh, variation Gunsberg defense c5 already attacking this central pawn we have e3 c takes on d4 e takes on d4 so David Janowski decided to play with this isolated queen's pawn which uh, often is a is a weakness which black would like to um, actually blockade and eliminate uh, it doesn't have a support from other pawns but at the same time is a is a very great trampoline for the white pieces uh, to create uh, some attacks and um, the, uh, we have a lot of examples how this pawn can be uh, very very dangerous so definitely what black has to do um blockade this pawn and um, and then try to eliminate but first of course have to survive any attacks uh, the main line played now in the 21st century is bishop e6 um, and uh, it's not the defending this pawn I mean it, it is defending the pawn but it, the pawn cannot be defended um, for example the knight can come to, to a3 the queen can come to the, the a4 so uh, sooner or later this pawn gonna fall however there is the, the another idea here after knight c3 knight f6 uh, because of course d5 would be pushed so the knight has to control um, d5 we have knight e5 uh, and now it's a it's a bit tricky knight c6 is the main idea here and after exchanging the stuff uh, we have queen a4 attacking this pawn so queen d7 and after exchanging the bishops this is the position which black would like to have uh, yes this pawn is the is also isolated and it's definitely a weakness but at the same time this is the great blockade um, against the pawn um, the isolated queen's pawn so so this is the way uh, usually it's played in the 21st century however we have bishop g4 and bishop g4 is a very shaky move it's always very dangerous whenever you play you know queen's gambit uh, whenever you play uh, some slav defense and so on moving the light square bishop to the to the f5 to the g4 can be very very risky uh, and uh, look at this what can happen when David Janowski uh, sits on the opposite sides of the board Bishop c4 first of course we have e6 and now Queen a4 so we have a check and now black have to be very carefully uh, how to respond so for example if the queen d7 then of course we're gonna have bishop b5 so this is completely unplayable knight c6 and this knight gonna come the bishop is under attack uh, now the knight is attacked three times already so black is completely lost here uh, knight d7 also doesn't work because after knight e5 uh, there is the problem this bishop is under attack uh, also this uh, this knight is pinned so um, knight f6 defending uh, also defending the bishop but it all too much it's all too much because bishop b5 
and you see already if white actually decide to take on d7 uh, then the problem is that the bishop gonna be without the protection so bishop has to be moved um, and then after bishop g5 now this knight is pinned so this is the problem bishop e7 bishop f6 g takes on f6 and white actually wins the piece and of course the game so black already have to be very careful we have knight c6 the strongest move in the in the uh, in the game in this position uh, and now of course knight e5 and look at this bishop this bishop um, doesn't pin anything and it's under attack it's uh, so this is the problem and and at the same time white of course uh, you know attack this knight with the tempo so uh from this time on, uh, definitely both players uh, calculate very precisely what's gonna happen, but one of them was much more precise. So, uh, how do you think? David Janowski, 28 years old uh, tactician, or Emil Shalop, 53 years old uh, master from Germany? Uh, let's see. Uh, the best move in the position would be a6 according to the to the engine and indeed um, there is no problem if the if the knight takes on on c3 then simply queen d7 uh, and this this knight is is you know um, taken back so there is no problem knight c3 there is only one trick here you cannot take with the queen because if you take with the queen you're gonna lose the exchange for now the the queen is pinned so of course um that would be the problem the only way to play is uh, b takes on c6 which is pretty good for black uh, still defending this d5 so according to the 21st uh, century uh, theory it's a uh, it's a quite good continuation however the problem is that this poor bishop is without the defense so what white can do is take the bishop for free and after b5 uh, give back the material uh, for two pawns uh, so this is the point uh, now black has the problems with the with the queen Probably the best for black would be bishop before uh, just exchange with tempo then the bishops make a space for the knight for example um, this way make a space for the knight uh, bring the rook to defend them the c6 and then castle in the next move and everything looks fine except one thing these two connected past pawn are deadly and white has two extra pawns and probably winning position so a6 even if the best in the position it still doesn't work like it uh, like it could uh, so what emil shallow played actually he calculated a very interesting uh, variation first queen d4 as the pawn is not uh, defended now because the knight jumped to e5 so this is the idea defending uh, already the, the bishop but at the same time defending this knight by a tactic so pretty nice idea here we have knight c6 and now queen e4 with the check and with the attack on the on the knight we have bishop e3 by david janowski b takes on c3 uh, and now this is the the thing who calculate more precisely uh, what would you play in this position as white is a tricky question no it's not a tricky question if you think you would like to play um the castle then you are right this is the best move in the position however not for david janowski david janowski goes for knight c3 attacks the queen the only defender of the pawn on c6 um so the queen has to go somewhere where to go uh, queen g2 this is the the probably only way and here is the moment where you should actually pause the video and find what david janowski had in mind uh, with playing knight c3 so who calculate better in this position david janowski or Emil Shalop. Pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, so for your information, there is only one winning move for white. Only one winning move for white. And the idea is to actually get this pawn on c6. So first white have to blockade uh, somehow this diagonal. How would you do that? Uh, with the pawn of course doesn't work uh, with the knight it doesn't work but with the bishop d5 it works as a charm so let's see what just happening white attacks the c6 pawn attacks the queen and at the same time uh, defend the rook 
What a move, very beautiful move. Black doesn't have much choice. I mean, can take with the queen, but of course it's losing. Uh, exchange the queen for two pieces, uh, but it's losing. Um, so we have e takes on d5. And now the end is uh, pretty simple. There are no complications. Simply queen c6 with check. Uh, if king d7, then of course the knight gonna jump to d5 with check, join the party. So king d8, queen um, a8, uh, king d7, queen b7, uh, king e6, queen c6 with check. Uh, we have bishop d6 and after bishop f4, Emil Shalop resign. So what a move, this bishop d5 is uh, is just a killer move, beautiful sacrifice, beautiful uh, blockade, uh, and then queen could take on c6 and win the game. Uh, of course, Emil Shalop uh, resigned because if he decides to take two rooks, um, which looks, you know, uh, pretty beautiful, the problem is there is the, the checkmate in three moves, uh, and it can be delivered in the, tr in the trivial way with the queen d6, uh, and this, of course, is a pretty simple one. Or uh, probably what Janowski would play the fancy way is a queen c8 with the check. If the king goes to the, to the e7, there is the checkmate on d5. Uh, so uh, king f6, but still we have a check. Uh, and now queen g4 would be a checkmate. A little bit more fancy, uh, but that what would happen. Uh, the only way where black actually can avoid the checkmate would be f6. Um, but of course that the bishop is lost. So that means um, after king f7, rook f1 and um, king gonna come to, for example, d2. And of course with the extra rook, there are no problems to, to win the game. The king can come to d2, connect the rook. There is also um, queen d5 uh, with the double attack, forcing to exchange the queens and, and so on. So position, of course, is completely won. This is why Emil Shalop resigned. What a game! This, this was just um, amazing. Another um, masterpiece tactic by David Janowski. I show you a couple of, um, of them already last days. So I hope um, you like that player now. And, um, and yeah, if you like this video, press like if for some reason you don't like it. Press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another amazing games uh, in chess history, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.